myself that are really kind of humble down to earth. You know, I, get, I, I get, don't think um, I, I don't think I was really meant to be in the like music industry because I can't play the game. I'm not very good at playing the game of like being this extrovert and I love a chat like you like I, I could literally talk the ears off anyone but I, I I like to do my music but I don't like to like shove it down people's faces so my social media is a bit lame because I don't I, I just I can't be out there all the time because I'm too busy like doing the washing up or putting the wash on or something you know so it's like and I think the balance is good I think if you're in the music industry full time because there was a time when I was I did that and I was doing music full time and I became um, a bit resentful and angry and and I was like why isn't why has that record not done well why why is that record not and I became it, it was like it, it hung off my my you know oh my god if I don't do well with this record it means I'm not going to be successful whereas now I think I release these records they're like mini lottery tickets one might stick one out of every hundred might stick and and that's enough for me <laughs> because it's about the creative process more so than the outcome i think now especially now i'm getting a bit older well you know you know i just did a record um quite recently with professor griff from public enemy yeah and you know he's an interesting guy because we were chatting on the phone and he said to me one night, he said, Rory, he said, I need to stop you. And I said, OK, what, what's, what's going on? And, and I was like, I thought maybe he doesn't like the record, but this, that, the next thing. All, all the paranoid kind of things that you think about. Because mm -hmm. um, that's my nature, you know. It's, I think it's a UK thing, you know. And some, <laughs> I just, think it is, yeah. You know, and, and he said, listen, he said, you have to stop trying to make people accept you yeah he said you're good at what you do he says so acceptance comes natural mm -hmm. and i kind of was like what? you know and, and then i thought about it and i was like that makes so much sense yeah and, and that's me now 30 years into the industry and mm -hmm. I'm sitting there going, I've just learned something. Oh, we never you know, stop learning. Every day's a school day, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I just learned something major there that, that I don't need to try and force this. Mm -hmm. It's what we're doing's good. What 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 you're doing's good, you know, what 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 he's doing's good and and, mm -hmm. and basically, you know, he, I'll not use the words that he used, but basically four letter word of everybody else yeah. and, and, you know because at the end of the day you know what we're doing is a, 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 a is what we're doing and 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 if, if people like it they like it if they don't like it yeah. and, I, and i love that and i love that that theory you've got you're doing your washing you're doing your because the, the music yeah. industry can, it can swamp you the pressure's immense it can i actually remember when I changed from living one life to another and that's when I started getting a little bit of social anxiety because I was I just felt so vulnerable you know when you're out on stage and I've not done it for very long I've been doing it years now so I can you know do it standing on my head but when I was first out there I felt so exposed I almost felt naked going out on stage just singing thinking will they like me you know is this you know almost question am I good enough you know for this industry you know but you know and it takes it takes a lot of adjustment and and you i was listening to an interview that you did with um somebody else and and he was saying you need to surround yourself with people you love the 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 key here is to surround you with people that um that care about you in the case of avici it seemed to me pretty clear he was working with a person that was extremely focused no matter what uh, tim felt which is where, where the in uh, the conflict of interests appears. Uh, if he would have been smart, the manager, he would have realized if I'm taking care of Tim as a person and his mental well-being, I'm investing in my own future, not only his. 
yeah. but he he seemed to have another idea and this is the problem about the music industry because you work with people that don't have any kind of training they're just basically realizing hey i could be a manager i like music and even though they have a good music ear they also need to have a big heart and you need to just keep grounding yourself and that is exactly what you need to do in this industry because if you don't you will end up forgetting who you are and what you're doing it for and that's mm -hmm. the worst thing that can happen and sometimes in in uh, certain people's circumstances it's you know it's it's killed them of course it has and, and that's where so, so i mean great great um I mean, it was great advice by Robin. Uh, that was Robin from Antelope, and 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 um, of course he was Antelope were the kind of godfathers of dance music in Sweden, and from that came Swedish House Mafia and Avicii, and 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 you uh, had a huge hit with Avicii, and so so talk me through that. How did that happen in the first place? It's not the story that everybody wants to hear. It's not the, you know, I think everyone wants to believe that we met and we collaborated and we was in the studio together, but we actually never had that opportunity. It was a really weird kind of um, way of having a hit record. It was just, so in Italy, a few years before 2010, I went to Italy. They were, they were, Seek, uh, the Love You Seek was a song that had been pretty much written I went in, changed a few of the lyrics because, yeah, just, uh, and then I re-recorded it. And then The Love You Seek was then released to, um, I think just around the world, but mainly like for it Italian, it was, a, it was an Italian label. And then um, a few years later, my mum said to me at the time, she said, uh, you're being played on Kiss. And I went, no, I've got nothing released that's going to be released she said no it's definitely you i know it's you so then i was on my way to blackpool and then i heard this bootleg which was the love you seek vocals on top of bromance and i was like don't know nothing about this record it was an unofficial bootleg i'm surprised that kiss was even playing it to be honest with you i don't know who put it together but it wasn't tim and it wasn't me and it wasn't anybody else associated with the record whatsoever yeah so yeah. People, yeah, so <laughs> Ministry got wind of this song and said, we think this is great and it could be a hit record. And um, and they said, but we need you to re-record the vocals because the timing is not right. So went in, re-recorded the vocals and the love you seek and bromance became seek bromance and that's how it happened. I mean, <laughs> I, think, I take it once the record came out like that, Mm -hmm. you, worked, you worked with Tim a little bit. You did a few gigs or you did no. nothing at all? Never. I never met him. Spoke to him? Never spoke to him. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? It's, amazing. it's a tragedy as well, because the thing is, I tried on multiple occasions to try and contact him. Mm. I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't know where his management were really tired. I tried to reach out on Twitter, a little old me. Uh, I sang on your record, um, is there any chance? Because he was doing like um, a show at the O2 and I wanted to go and my husband at the time went and he's standing in the middle of the crowd hearing my song. Yeah. <laughs> but we couldn't get anywhere near him. So, yeah, that no, was a, yeah. No, that's, that, that, that's a revelation that's for people. <laughs> but, but you did sing at his tribute show. And, I did, yeah. And, 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 and uh, you know, I saw saw that video, and that was incredible. Watching life go by, no one who to 
It was bittersweet, so it was the most sort of highlight of my career, really. I'd never performed in front of anybody of that capacity. I'd never been in a, in a like, performing with that much love in a room, and, yeah. and I could feel it. And uh, I'd never had so much fear, sadness, laughter. It was, it was everything. It was, um, it was uh, I'll never, ever forget it. It was amazing. But the sad part is he wasn't there. And that's that was sad. You know, I met his dad and uh, and his and his friends and it was it, yeah, especially the bit at the end where his dad done the speech. I mean I couldn't understand what his dad was saying, but I met his dad and obviously because it was in their you know, their own language and and but you could you could feel the sadness in the room. It was not easy to uh to do that performance it wasn't <laughs> Thank you.